Welcome to today's lecture on evolution of painting in colonial India. Presently, we are discussing that how during the colonial period, that is from 1757 onwards, there was a new style that was emerging in painting. However, this new style was not an alien concept because it was the Indian artists who were contributing to the beautiful artworks that were developing. So, therefore, the Mughal training and European conventions, they both got intermixed and hence the style of painting that developed was company style. A very important role in this was played by Martin who had settled and had become part of the establishment. He started commissioning several Lucknowi artists like Bahadur Singh and Mihir Chand who fused their Mughal training with European style as well as materials and what was created was a new and a highly innovative way of depicting the natural world. As you can see in one of these paintings which is the painting of a sugar mill that was operated by oxen. You can see how there was there is a different kind of image that is visible as compared to the ones that I have shared with you earlier when we were discussing Mughal miniature art, when there was lavish use of gold, silver as well as vibrant colors. So here the emphasis is more on the concept. This is another example that of tomb of Sultan Ghiasuddin. This is the visual of a drawing of a sculpted limestone slab from Amravati Stupa which was developed in 1819 by the artist Sheikh Abdullah who was a draftsman who had been employed by Mackenzie at Calcutta. This is another visual dated 1819 which was made by Sheikh Abdullah who was a draftsman employed by Mackenzie. This is a watercolor drawing of a temple at Jajpur in Orissa. Again, you can see the difference of perspective, the use, minimalistic use of colors. This is the painting of a sacred site at Tirupati, which shows buildings, temples, as well as the surrounding landscape. This was made by a, either a Tamil or a Telugu artist and again it was commissioned by Mackenzie. So, when we discuss all these paintings and we highlight the kind of give and take that was happening, uh, we also now move on to the next uh, aspect and that is uh, the way painting developed as Indian nationalism started developing. So, when we talk about the nationalist school of painting, uh, we can say that uh, Bengal school of art was a very important part of this process. Originating in Calcutta and Shantiniketan, the Bengal school of art promoted a distinctly Indian modernism which blossomed throughout India during the British Raj of the early 20th century. There was a synthesis of folk art, Indian painting traditions, Hindu imagery, indigenous materials uh, as well as depictions of contemporary rural life uh, and several artists of Bengal school of art celebrated humanism and they brought about a dynamic voice to Indian identity, freedom as well as liberation. We also need to discuss the importance or the repulsion towards the colonial mindset. During the British rule, as part of the colonial agenda, the Britishers had established art schools at Bombay, Madras, Calcutta, which we have just discussed. These had been established to propagate Western values in art education. 
they persuaded the educated Indians to believe that Indians had no cultural heritage of their own. And this led to the downswing of the traditional conventions as well as styles of Indian art. It was at this point of time that there was an identity crisis and Bengal school of art with the highly gifted artists like Abhinindranath Tagore, Raja Ravi Verma, then Gaganendranath Tagore, Nandalal Bose and Jamini Roy came to play an important role. These artists not only gave a sense of direction to this new art movement, but they also prevented the downfall of the already existing painting traditions in India. If we talk, trace the beginning of this style of painting or this movement that is the Bengal school of art, in 1907 several art lovers had constituted the society of oriental art. There were several artists like Nandilal Bose, Asit Kumar Haldar, Samarindranath Gupta who were who engaged to copy the Ajanta and Bagh paintings which were later published in several European journals. Hence, uh, this project proved the antiquity and the greatness of ancient Indian art, culture, especially painting and all this was now reaching a global audience also. This greatly inspired Indian artists to go back to the native tradition rather than blindly copy the lifeless western realism. So, they now started developing an, um, an, a style which was which imbibed the ancient with the modern uh, and uh, it also was rooted in the concept of Swadeshi to express Indian themes in their paintings which deliberately turned away from western styles or subjects. So, the Bengal school of painting emerged as a very important art movement in modern India. It not only laid the foundation stone for the growth of modern painting by giving traditional Indian painting styles a new cultural consciousness, but it also kind of inspired uh, 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 Indians who were now thinking in terms of challenging British rule. In 1908, the society arranged its first exhibition in Paris, where most of the paintings of Abhinindranath and his students were exhibited to the global audience. And this was highly appreciated uh, both by the Britishers as well as by the high class Indian society. This exhibition brought the paintings of the Bengal st uh, style of art before the masses of Calcutta also for the first time and it also kind of created an interest and awakening among them. As a result of all these changes, we can see that Swadeshi movement also continued to inspire the Bengal school. By the early part of 20th century, Indian nationalist leaders promoted the concept of Swadeshi which was a movement of self-reliance in the face of British onslaught and this was very active especially in the province of Bengal. So, Swadeshi called for socio-cultural, political, economic reforms that would weaken the clutches of British rule. Boycotts of British manufacturers were organized in favor of domestic as well as local products, which would uh, not only uh, give a boost to Indian industry, then several cultural movements were also started to question British or Western hegemony, literature, visual arts uh, and there was an attempt to produce works of uniquely Indian qualities. So, there was now a turning towards themes uh, that were rooted in ancient Indian culture as well as painting styles. So, we can say that Bengal school was a form of resistance that gave rise to Indian nationalism.
and during the British Raj, when the British Crown ruled the Indian subcontinent from 1858 to 1947, uh, there uh, were several traditional Indian painting styles that had been relegated to the background because they did not really appeal to the tastes of the colonial collectors. In addition to the European painting techniques and subjects that were taught in artistic academies, company paintings were widely promoted, which again catered to British sensibilities. While company paintings presented Indian subjects of indigenous plant life or traditional garb or rituals, and all this was being done specifically through the European gaze. Uh, so, rather than appreciating or celebrating Indian cultural traditions, it was merely an attempt to project them to the larger world as a kind of exotica. So, the Bengal school arose to counter this kind of a narrative and uh, in order to enhance the importance of the Indian past, Mughal influences, Rajasthani and Pahadi styles, uh, all these were projected as uh, elegant uh, and distinct styles of Indian painting. Uh, there were several contemporary British supporters also of Bengal school uh, and it was uh, while the Bengal school was a direct refusal of British artistic traditions, one of the major founders was Havel, who was an English art historian, a teacher, an arts administrator as well as an author. He urged his students to turn to Mughal miniatures rather than to British models of production. While the principal of the Government School of Art in Calcutta, Havel helped uh, founding artists of the Bengal school such as Abhinindranath Tagore and his sister Sunaini Devi fully developed their uh, caliber and style of the movement and also promoted them through educational systems. Uh, one can also talk about some specific artists belonging to the Bengal school, for example, Nandalal Bose, who shared a very special relationship with Mahatma Gandhi. And uh, both Nandalal uh, Bose as well as Abhinindranath Tagore became the leaders of the uh, Bengal movement in painting. Uh, and they were quite disappointed by the British treatment of Indian painting traditions, history, culture as well as artists. So, Nandalal Bose turned to Swadeshi notions of developing a distinctively Indian modern art. He turned to the murals of Ajanta and produced scenes from Indian mythology as well as contemporary daily village life. In the 1920s and 30s, he developed a friendship and a relationship with Mahatma Gandhi, who often invited him to produce works for political pavilions. Bose commemorated Gandhi's 1930 26-day Dandi March with a series of sketches that were presented to him as a humble gift and uh, uh, most of the work uh, revolved around the usage of lines. These images of Gandhi contributed to the development of 20th century Indian modernism, nationalism as well as identity. As you can see in this image that is being displayed on the screen, the image of Mahatma Gandhi using the lines. Another important painter about whom one can talk was Asit Kumar Haldar, a painter of Bengal Renaissance. He was the nephew of Rabindranath Tagore. He studied painting under Jadu Pal and Bakeshwar Pal, who also were two leading Bengal artists, and joined Nandalal Bose to document the Ajanta cave paintings and frescoes from 1909 to 11. His works also uh, synthesize Buddhist art 
with Indian history. He was in fact the first Indian artist to be appointed as the principal of a government art school and also to be elected as a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts London 1934. In addition to his artistic activities uh, and poetry, Haldar, like other contemporary artists belonging to Bengal Art School, was committed to social reforms as well as educational programs and uh, the, the fight for Indian nationalism uh, was very dear to his heart as well. So we see that the Bengal School of Art was no longer a movement which, which was only limited to Calcutta and Shanti Niketan because it was developing around uh, a much broader narrative and the Indian modernism which blossomed throughout India during the British rule of early 20th century was definitely rooted in Indian cultural traditions. The artists aimed to bring about a dynamic voice to India, Indian identity, the idea of freedom, liberation and they very cleverly synthesized folk art with Indian painting traditions, Hindu imagery, depictions of rural life uh, and uh, Swadeshi as well as the resistance movement that was giving rise to Indian nationalism. So, it arose as a revolutionary and a nationalist movement and it reacted against the academic art styles that previously had been promoted under uh, British hegemony. It replaced the western styles by Mughal, Rajasthani, Pahari styles and the focus on Indian traditions and daily life was not to be missed. Havel, who was a huge lover of Indian art forms, attempted to reform the teaching methods at the Calcutta School of Art by replacing European paintings and plaster cast of Western antiquities from the school's art gallery with Indian artworks. He helped the artists of the Bengal school like Abhinindranath Tagore and his sister Sunaini Devi also to continue further and to bring about a more holistic approach to the entire process of painting. Abhinindranath, who was a pioneer, he learned the watercolor technique and synthesized it with the European color technique and like this he created a novel wash technique. This became the hallmark of Bengal school and it also marked the significance of the traditional tempera method. Uh, here I would like to give an example of uh, a painting titled The Journey's End. Bengal School of Art is incomplete without the mention of Abhinindranath Tagore who was instrumental not only in its establishment but also in its promotion. So like some of the, his paintings, Journey's End was also made by using this new technique that had evolved through the fusion of Indian tempera method and Japanese wash technique which was used in this specific painting. The color palette that was used in the painting consisted only of a few shades. For example, red, brown, yellow in the background and a very little tint of blue. So we see that the painting was not very vibrant or no, was not made in order to uh, attract attention. The colors and the technique used created a misty effect producing a romantic sentiment that was bound to remain etched in the minds of the viewer for a long time. It, this painting also created an unforgettable image and there was a sense of pain and suffering which emerged from the painting and it could not be ignored. Uh, the, this image was around a half collapsed camel which had been buried under tons of baggage 
and uh, this painting the image of this painting evoked curiosity as well as sympathy so uh, now let us take a closer look at this masterpiece as you can see all the features that i have described see the camel almost dead so basically his life coming to an end and there is a speculation that probably the artist was trying to project the condition of british india the way india was suffering under the colonial masters it was crumbling under the heavy load of taxation exploitation the drain of wealth the similar way this camel also had reached an end because of the long suffering it had been subjected to so this artwork seems to be clear in terms of what it wanted to project that was the pain and the misery of an animal and this animal was shown as incapable of freeing itself from the clutches of the greedy master the hidden message is quite clear it was created in the year 1913 at a time when most of india was under the british raj and when indian artists and writers were gaining international prominence and the bengal school of art had come of age abhinendranath's uncle rabindranath tagore had won the nobel prize in literature for his legendary book gitanjali this was also an era when indians were working hard to revive their lost glory and they were devising new ways of gaining freedom they had objected to partition of bengal and this probably was the right time for abhinendranath tagore to attract both culturally withdrawn indians as well as to uh, involve international audience and to make them notice the plight of the country through the medium of art now let us discuss the predominant styles and some other important paintings belonging to the bengal school as i just told you that bengal school is known for the impressive combination of simple and clear paintings with simple color schemes very soft rhythmic figures light shades uh, effects and uh, many of them were inspired by the styles of ajanta as well as mughal and rajasthani schools of art they avoided landscapes and portraits representations of contemporary life or events uh, and they went many of them even went to england and acquired considerable skill in different mediums of artistic representation they introduced woodcut lithography etching sculpture commercial art book illustrations posters and other forms of propaganda art the bengal school of painting emphasized more upon lining and sketching and it is also known for uh, its very impressive application of different color shades of soft misty and light colors Uh, and abhinendranath adopted the japanese wash technique but he did not completely copy it he experimented and made some changes in it by adding white in his color schemes a color that had never been used in the original japanese technique in this technique the painting is washed several times after applying colors and because of this the excessive color gets washed away giving it a very transparent kind of an effect and a mistiness the colors appear soft as well as delicate in the bengal style of paintings because of this wash technique the white color mixed with the misty brown and yellow color combination it grants a very peculiar texture and it also creates an impression of mysticism in the painting 
So the painters of Bengal school mostly used tempera which was a traditional technique of Indian miniature paintings. The tempera works were done on handmade paper with brush and opaque colors. The colors were applied in a flat manner similar to miniature painting using a flat pattern, details, decoration as well as a very soft finished lining. The main themes of Bengal school of art were historical as well as religious paintings. So, if we talk about Abhanindranath's work, then one can speak of Buddha, Sujata, Traveller, the Lotus, Ganesh Janani, then Sita in captivity in Lanka. Uh, then uh, one can talk about Nandalal's uh, Shiva drinking poison and Partha Sarthi paintings. Uh, then uh, landscape paintings were also sometimes done in Bengal school. Some of them are the Spirit of Rock uh, by Abhanindranath Tagore and Puri Temple by Gaganindranath Tagore. Then the body structures of Bengal school of paintings were very much influenced by the Mughal and Rajput miniature and Ajanta paintings. Just like the Mughals and Rajputs uh, avoided detailed body structures in their paintings, the Bengal school also started neglecting them. The facial expressions also were more or less around sadness or shyness as well as anger which, which was quite visible in Bengal style of paintings rather than paintings of happiness or gay abandon. Here I would like to share an example of the painting by Nandalal Bose that is tiller of the soil that is Indian farmer and this was part of the special painting that was painted to decorate the pavilion site of Congress session Haripura in 1938 uh, and in this painting the Indian farmer has been shown tilling the field in traditional method. The farmer's body has been shown in dark brown color and is lined cloth or dhoti in turban in white color. The plough has been shown in brown color and the bullocks in white color and clothes on their backs with blue color. As you can see in this visual, such a simple and impressive way of showing the hard work that was rendered time and again by Indian farmer. Thank you.